What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. With this video, we are jumping into Reckoning War Fantastic Four, issue number 42. If you have not been keeping up with the Reckoning War, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this event. What we have seen is a group of alien warlords called the Reckoning. They have been arming the universe's most savage alien races with high-tech weaponry that was developed by the Watchers eons ago. Mr. Fantastic having all of the knowledge of the Watchers. We have the Watcher being imprisoned by his own people. His only hope may be Nick Fury. Be sure to buy the comics, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up in New York City. Right now, the forces of the Reckoning, they are descending down on the Baxter building, breaking into the stronghold of the Fantastic Four. We have all of the Fantastic Four children making their escape, heading downstairs. It looks like they might get cornered in. Recognizing this situation is probably out of their hands, they need to get a hold of Mr. Fantastic. Taking us to space, that is where we pick up with Mr. Fantastic, The Thing, Jack of Hearts, and She-Hulk. They had come here to try to stop this crystal from being stolen, but they failed to do so. And in the battle, we saw that Ben was severely injured. Luckily, Jack of Hearts and his abilities are able to more or less carterize his wounds together. As these guys begin to lick their wounds, Mr. Fantastic wants to find out where they took that crystal. But that's a clue, because he doesn't know. Having the knowledge of all watchers. They took the crystal to a place that nobody can find it. A blind spot to the watchers. This place in the universe is known as Obscura Minor. Mr. Fantastic now having a destination. He uses his accumulated knowledge and he is able to teleport them all to Obscura Minor. And while She-Hulk has never actually been here, she knows what this place is. This planet, empty, desolate, and wiped clean of any life that has existed. This is when Mr. Fantastic, he gets a communication from Val, letting him know the base has been overrun, that they have no other options, and it is time to initiate Protocol Zero. Mr. Fantastic giving them the confirmation. This is when everything goes silent. Tears coming out of his eyes. He tells Jack and She-Hulk that they need to go take a walk. He needs an opportunity to have a real heart-to-heart Heart with Ben, letting him know the reckoning. They almost took control of the Forever Gate. This couldn't be allowed to happen. Now, Ben knew that it had one more jump in it, believing that they took that jump to an undisclosed location, believing that Alicia and all of the children, they may just be stranded. He tells Ben that the problem was the gate itself. They could not let that gate fall into enemy hands. And so Protocol Zero, it is in fact a self-destruct sequence. Alicia, Joe, Nikki, Mr. Fantastic's children, they are all gone. They sacrifice themselves for the good of the universe. As Ben takes this information in, he closes his eyes just for a moment, only to open them and see nothing but red. Picking us up with She-Hulk and Jack, they are making their way through this place and She-Hulk is divulging to Jack how she knows it. This entire world, its history, its culture, all of its achievements, no one will ever know that She-Hulk is responsible. This population, they were very big Clueses. They found out that the Watchers had been watching them, and they found this as a huge invasion into their privacy. Being a cosmic judge, she agreed with them. She ruled that this world would become a dark sector of space. If you're interested in finding out when this happened, go check out She-Hulk 2005 series, issue number 7. But when nobody was watching, that's when the reckoning came down on them. As she tells this story, this is where we see Wrath. 
Him and his army are the ones that slaughtered this entire planet, knowing that this would be the beachhead. This would be the location where they staged their war. A blind spot out of the sight of the Watchers. An opportunity to be able to build up their masses and strike all at once. As She-Hulk charges in, she quickly recognizes she is outmatched, though she tries to throw some heavy punches. As Jack is throwing every bit of energy he can, the truth is, Wrath is far too strong for this. He survived a blast that wiped out nine-tenths of all creation. He has massacred people, worlds, galaxies alike. The two of them are nothing. Taking them both and slamming their heads together, this is a fun game for him. Because the stronger one is going to survive, and they are going to know that it was their own body who killed their comrade. And so while the two of them are just getting their butts kicked, we are taken to planet T-37X, homeworld of the Watchers. And currently Nick Fury, he is eavesdropping on all of the conversations, overhearing that the Great Gathering is about to begin. This gathering is where all the Watchers come together, they take their knowledge, and they upload it. One of the Watchers are being set aside, being put on a different mission. This makes Nick Fury wonder what he's up to, what makes him so special and so unique that he would be left out of this. But he also recognizes this may be the only time that he can rescue his Watcher. Currently imprisoned, nobody is going to be watching him. And so it is a perfect opportunity for a jailbreak. Throwing us all the way to the capital city of Kree and Scroll Empire. We are picking up with both Teddy and Billy. As they are fighting off all of the forces of the Reckoning, this is where some help comes in. That help comes in the form of Johnny. Emperor Hulking thanks him for making his arrival. Coming just in time, they are now able to turn the tide in this battle. Johnny letting him know that if you really want to help me, once we have freed your planet from all of this, we can go save many more worlds. Emperor Hulking more than willing to do this. They are not going to be doing it just by themselves. With Johnny asking the help of some other individuals, we see the arrival of the Star Jammers, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and a handful of our other friends. While the forces of good are now gathering for the most epic battle, we are taken back to Ben and Mr. Fantastic. Brother versus brother. The Thing versus the Stretch Man. And while Mr. Fantastic, he has been trying his best to just restrain the thing. The truth of the matter is he is not able to. Ben is letting go with every bit of power he has. He is trying to rip him in half. Smashing Mr. Fantastic onto the ground. It looks like the thing is about to kill him. Mr. Fantastic is trying to get words out, but Ben just doesn't want to hear it. He has stood by his side day in and day out. Every mistake turning him into a monster. Every decision that he has ever made. Ben has always found a way to be right there by his side. But this time it has gone too far. Mr. Fantastic getting the opportunity. He presses a button on his suit. This button is comms to Alicia and the children. Stopping the thing right there in his tracks. He is able to talk to the people he loves. Thinking that they had died that simply didn't happen thanking the heavens that his family is still alive mr fantastic he gets up and he says that there is work to do now ben he's he's not ready to just go back to work he wants to find out what the heck that was about you just made me believe that my entire family had died and clearly that wasn't a self-destruct protocol so what happened mr fantastic lets him know that you face rapture and then you froze. In the past, if anybody had knocked him down, he would have got right back up and he would have fought like hell. He would have kept fighting until he won, but not this time. And as a man who knows everything right now, he knows exactly why. In the past, he had nothing to lose, but now he really does. He has a wife and a family that is waiting back home, something to live for. This has put him off his game, and in this war, the Reckoning War, 
everything is at stake. It's not just him. It's not just the people he loves. It is everybody. And now, next time, he won't freeze up. Next time, he will fight to the death. Because now you have something to fight for. Ben letting him know that he might be right. But that doesn't mean he's going to forgive him for what he just did. Mr. Fantastic could care less. The truth being, he needed the thing at the top of his game. And now that he is, they can go help their friends. Heading over to go help Jack and Jin. This is where they find a gateway. Knowing that they have to go in there and try to save them. They walk through and they find themselves in the Barrens. The toxic remains of what was left of nine tenths of the universe. The only thing is that Wrath has tricked them into going in here. Closing the portal behind them, the four individuals are now stuck in the Barrens. And he believes firmly that it will take them eons to learn how to get out of this place. Because they had Watcher technology at their disposal and it took them just as long to figure out how to break through. As this story comes to a close, we are taken to the Florida Everglades. Doctor Doom is holding an artifact. This artifact has been the want of someone who is extremely powerful, said to be an Omega level alien, and right now Doctor Doom is summoning that alien to his cause. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. That last little bit there, that is referring to Cormormant. This appears to be Doctor Doom's plan. Maybe he's going to use this alien against the Reckoning. At least that's my assumption in this. In some ty type of a attempt to control this situation. To control the tide of the battle. He is going to use something that is essentially a universal threat. Of course, the biggest topic of discussion is brother versus brother. Mr. Fantastic versus the Thing. And we see who won that fight. The winner was hands down the Thing. Though it could be argued that Mr. Fantastic, he wasn't fighting back. The only thing he was trying to do was restrain him. He was trying to get all of this out of him. To bring that warrior back. The last thing they need is a liability. The last thing they need is the Thing not bring in 100% gain to this battle. And Mr. Fantastic only having 42 hours left to live. There is nothing he won't do to ensure the battle's success. Now trapped in the Barrens, he is going to have to find his way out. And if anybody can do it, it is Mr. Fantastic. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to donate to the channel, you can do so by hitting the super thanks button. This will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. If you can't do that, do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.